Hello everyone. This hour on Verbling, the next in my great short story series, we are working on uh, actually completing our class from last time on the short story by John Cheever, The Swimmer. And today we're going to work on our class discussion. So I can do a quick review of the plot, um, but the idea is that you read it with us, or before class you had read and listen to the uh, podcast that I linked there for you on the document. Okay, so that's a little bit about the class. Here's a bit about me. I'm John Eric, your verbling teacher for this hour, and I'm an American teacher from New York, hanging out in Lisbon, Portugal, to bring you this class. And here are three quick rules to help you participate. Don't forget to turn off, tune in, and open up, which means turn off your microphone when you're not speaking so we keep the classroom quiet. Whenever you're not speaking, turn it off. Rule two, tune in to the new words that you learn. Use them as actively as you can throughout the class, particularly if I correct you. And rule three, open up to your classmates. Relax and have fun. We're all here to learn and this is a safe and respectful place to practice your English. Okay, so that's a little bit about my class and a little bit about me. And what we're going to do just to start off with is just make sure that everything is clear about what actually happened in the story. So you've already read it or you've listened to the podcast and hopefully you have. And by the way, the links are on the second page. So the second link is the podcast to The New Yorker. Uh, I didn't actually listen to this one. I've listened to others. Uh, but I know that they have this series. So I linked it there as a way for you to hear a native speaker read the story. And then we did a little quiz. I asked you to skim through the story and see <clears throat> how many of these questions you could answer. So we'll be returning to that in just a minute. First, it was a very difficult story, but I read, I read it again. Uh, I, and I found it was a very interesting story. But it takes time to understand. Well, quite difficult. text is quite difficult. So do you think it's more difficult? So it is, uh, I think just skimming is uh, impossible here in little time. Yeah, but the skimming was just to give you a, a kind of an overview, not to worry about the details. And then it the takes warm -up. three hours for me to. For, did all of the text. Of course, but I didn't want you to read it in the skimming stage. I wanted you just to try to get uh, a general picture, a very, very general picture. And then that way it would be easier to follow as we were reading. So it's just an exercise. But let me first clarify one thing just before we begin. I want to make sure that the details of the story, not the details, just that the plot is clear. So. I'm going to give you a brief summary of the plot. Um, these are the facts of the plot, not what the plot means. Plot by plot, I mean the, the physical actions that occur with the characters in the story. So I just want to go over them really quickly to make sure that there's no confusion about what actually happens, because you've probably noticed some of the story appears to be happening in the imagination of the main character or someone's imagination. So we have to differentiate between what really happened and what the character is imagining or what the character is experiencing. So this is what we know. Well, let me ask you. I can tell you, but you tell me. What do we know about Nettie? What actually happened in the story? You give me your ideas first. Uh, me? So for those Nettie. of you who had, well, <laughs> the whole class, the whole class. Everyone, let's decide what actually happened first, and then we'll go back and take a look at our skimming part. So, yeah, go ahead, Yuki. Tell us very briefly what actually happens in the story. Not what it means, but what actually happens. Uh, Nelly, uh protagonist of this story, is uh, Nebi... Uh, Nebi... How to say Nebi, yeah? Uh, the, the name is ne Nebi. Nebi Meril, yeah? Nebi Meril, yeah? Meryl, right, Meryl. Meryl. He, uh, he's a uh, middle-aged man, 
but he he has a, a, a plenty of energy and it uh, he he looks uh, still young uh, he is now uh, he now he joined in the party uh, to his uh, neighbors uh, he go, so he goes to a party at his neighbor's he, house he go, he went to the party uh, mm -hmm. to maybe to fr his friend's party yeah? yeah and his wife his wife was with him and and suddenly uh, he um, it occurred to him that by it occurred to him that to that that swim. Uh, it occurred to to him that it is very inter It is maybe it may be interesting to swim uh, the south southwest and to and to reach his home by water. Interesting uh, or fun? It's a very. I think it fun. It it fun. is fun. Yeah, it would be fun. You it do would something be fun to swim. Uh, crazy, uh, wacky yeah, thing. I'm going to swim yeah, home from the party. Idea. Uh, <laughs> uh, because there are there are many there are many pools. Uh, it, uh, this area uh, in this area uh, many rich uh, rich people, uh, rich American people live. They have uh, their own swimming pool. So he decided to uh, go uh, taking a dog deck, mm -hmm. uh, zigzag, <laughs> to, uh, to, to zigzag. Uh, yes. Zigzag his way home. To uh, yes, uh, and head head to the home, heading to the home by by swimming every pool. Right. Let me, let me just ask one a question one. to the rest of the group. Did everyone have a chance to listen to or read the story? Carmen, did you have a chance to read it? No, I'm sorry, I don't know anything about it. Oh my God, what are you going to do in the class then? Because we're going to we're going to give oh. away the story. Well, I'm just <laughs> going to listen to you. Okay. Give me with the details, and that's it. Oh. <laughs> but I'll try to to read it to you later. Okay, okay. And let me just ask, because I'm just worried that we're going to give away the surprise. <laughs> oh, don't worry about it. Don't worry. All right. And and Ethan, did you have a chance to read it or listen to it? I just want to see if everyone is who's on the same page here. And uh, Ethan, I don't hear you, so uh, I can't see who's in the classroom. Uh, Mahmoud, did you have a chance to read it? You no, know, I haven't read it. Okay, so else. we're going to be discussing it. So we're going to, you know, we're going to be talking about the plot. So if you want to be surprised then just be aware we're going to tell you everything that happens in the story okay mm -hmm. just so you know i don't want to, i don't yeah. you know i don't want there to be spoilers no spoilers <laughs> uh ethan did you have a chance to read the story uh where the story um where is the story the sima john chiva yeah but did you did you have a chance to read it or do you need the link do you need the link to the story yeah. Okay. So, the the links are always in the description of the class where it says class material. But I'll give you the link again here in the chat window. All right. Okay. All right. And we're not going to read it because we've already read it. We're just going to discuss it. So, if you want to be surprised, you have to come back to another class because we're going to tell you everything that happens in the story. Okay, just so you know. Maybe uh, I continue. That's sure. I just wanted to see Great. where everyone was. And one more thing. If one more nobody, thing. Nobody read, read, read the story. How to how to discuss about it? Yeah, exactly. Can't really discuss yeah, it if yeah. no one's read it. <laughs> but listen, for this kind of class where we have a discussion, just be aware, everyone, that I'm I'm always going to put a link to the story, and if possible to a uh, audio to a recording so that if you haven't read it you can listen to a native speaker read it I'm going to try to use the stories um, mostly from the New Yorker because there's always someone reading the stories mostly from there but other places too okay and can unfortunately you, uh, I, can I go for it can I point an uh, important point sure 
uh, after we reserving the class, yeah. uh, is it possible? Uh, could you send us? Uh, how about uh, the story uh, to uh, mail for emailing? Well, can you can you email? The answer to that is us, yes. I don't have to send it because it's always in Verbling. It's oh, it's right there in front of you. Just take a quick look. I'm going to share my screen, okay? And just take a look here. Here's the class description. It says John Eric. No, it doesn't. It says English great short stories discussion of Chi vs. Swimmer. And then down here, you see class material, story and notes. Yes. Do you see that? Yes, I see. So it's always the it's always there for you and it will always be there and if for any reason there's a problem you just send me a message through Verbling and you can also send me a message at any of these links as well okay okay if for any reason you can't get it you just send me a message but it should always be there for you okay, okay. all right Thanks. so uh, I can't turn my sh screen sharing off what's going on I'm using Chrome instead of Firefox just to because I thought there was problems. And now there's even worse problems. I can't get rid of my screen sharing. <laughs> oh no. Oh wait, there it is. There it is. I can't believe this. So ho hold on a second. Let me see if I can. Okay, so UK, it looks like it's going to be me and you discussing this. Yes. You could just give me a second because I got to just fix my screen sharing. Okay, now there we go. Okay, so Yuki, I just want to point one thing out here before before we go into into in depth. Okay. Uh, in the story, uh, just to help everyone or to help you if you read it, uh, remember the plot points. He goes to Graham's pool first. So I'm going to I'm going to divide the story into these parts. He starts at the uh, Wester Hazies. That's where he is with the, at, on the Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon. Then he goes to Graham's pools. And then he goes to the Welchers pools. Uh, he then crosses a highway. Um, and he decide he has to think whether he wants to head back to where he was at the Wester Hazies or not. Uh, then he goes to the Satchises. Uh, that's where the guy has the operation. He then goes to the Bizwangers. Uh, I'm just looking through the plot points here. And then he ends up at Shirley Adams. That's his. That's his, the girl he had the affair with. Um, and he ends up. Give me a second here. He reaches his own house at the end. Okay. Um, so. If we count the plot points here, we've got one, two, three, four, five, I forgot the Hallorant, six, seven, eight. There's about arguably seven or eight different points in the story, and each one is at a different swimming pool. So, what, so one way to analyze the story would be to discuss what happens at each swimming pool, what the differences are. That would be one general way to discuss it. So I'm going to keep referring to these different swimming pools, but just to give you a quick idea, when he goes to Graham's pool, he has a drink and he's welcomed. And then he goes across the street to the Hammer's pool. There's a, there's a pool party going on. Then he goes to the Welcher's pool. Uh, hang on a second. And that's where he goes there, but no one's home. And he's surprised. That, that there's no one in the house because it's a Sunday afternoon, they hadn't said anything to him, and there's a for sale sign in front of the house. So that's the first time where he encounters something that he's not expecting. Then he reaches the highway, and he's starting to feel tired, and he doesn't know if he should cross the highway to complete his journey or if he yes. should turn back. F firstly, he is uh, vigorous, he's cheerful, but uh, after, after, uh, mm, uh, as uh, um, the the far story goes, the uh, uh, the more 
uh, he he would be he will retire. So in the end of the story, he is weak and he is uh, very um, undurable. He is he is he is tired. He is he getting. Uh, it seems that he get he get older. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In the first of the story, she uh, she uh, she he is de described to, uh, as a young pe young person full of energy. But mm -hmm. in the end of the story, he is, he looks like old pe old person. It's very interesting. Such a uh, time time um, it it. it as, as if it time 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 passes very quickly in the story, mm -hmm. and the season also have changed. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll uh, talk about all that in just a moment. Let me let me just finish uh, the plot points I'm sorry. just mm -hmm. for everyone who's following along. So halfway through the story, of course, Yuki's right. Time seems to move in a weird way. It seems to speed up, or something. It's hard to say exactly what if he's imagining it or not. But he does seem to get, lose his energy. So at the halfway point, he's got to cross the highway, and it's very uncomfortable. People are making fun of him because he's in his bathing suit crossing a highway. And then the second half of the story, well, it's more than the, than the halfway point, he goes on to the Hallorans who are naked. <laughs> he has to take off his swimming trunks. And instead of being welcomed, they start to say how sorry they are. And he doesn't know what they're talking about. It's as if his memory has failed him. Then he moves on to the Satchistas. By the way, they're like naturalists, right? So they, they're, they're out there naked. He then goes on to the Satchistas pool. And he wants to get a drink. He's feeling really weary. But then he, he realizes that, that one of them is ill and had an operation or something like that. So he, he's been very rude because he's asking to have alcohol, but the guy can't drink. So he kind of escapes there, and he goes to the Bizwangers. These are other neighbors, and they used to invite him to dinner, but he always refused the invitation. Well, instead of being greeted with open arms, they're rude to him. They make fun of him to his face, and they bring up all the times that he... And then they call him a gatecrasher. Finally, the last house is Shirley, Shirley Adams. This was the girl, the woman that had been his mistress, and he broke off the relationship. And she's downright hostile. <clears throat> she's she's even worse than the last experience at the Bizwangers. Um, he ends up at home, and for the second time in the story, he goes to a house where there's apparently uh, nobody there. So he goes home, but all the lights are off. It's almost as if the house is abandoned, and he doesn't know where anyone could be, and the door is locked. So he can't even get in. And he ends up, at the end of the story, looking in the windows and seeing that the house is empty. His own house is empty when he returns home. So um, that's just an overview of the structure of the story, just, just so that we can sort of refer to those sections. One more thing, and then we'll get into the, deeply into the discussion here, which is at the bottom of the document that I shared with you, if you take a look at the last page, there's a discussion. So I put some questions for you. What I did is I tried to think of the major themes of the story and ask one question about each of the themes that I thought was the most important. So you'll see that at the, la the, the last and second to last page. So we can talk about those now. You can go there. I'm having trouble sharing my screen, so I'm going to stop sharing it. But why don't we start with that first question. Yuki, Yes. you were talking about this. How does the passage of time occur in the story? What's unusual about it? Uh, in this story, uh, story began in the, in the middle of summer, uh, full, of, full of sunlight. But in the end of the story, it, it sounds like the uh, end, of, end of autumn. End of fall, so I think uh, time has passed quickly in this story, uh, and and at the same time, uh, it seemed like for me that that uh, his life, his future life has has takes place in this story, 
so uh, as as story goes, uh, there are, there are, there happens many things uh, uh, which uh, uh, protagonist of a story, uh, Nadi, uh, hasn't remember. Right. So so it happens. Uh, so uh, people are surround, surrounding him, talking about his. Uh, his life about his life about his, about the situation uh, about his his family, but he didn't uh, uh, remember about it at all. Mm -hmm. So it means that I think it means that that um, time passed very quickly. Uh, he getting older in this story in in this half a day. Uh, he he getting older, um, and at, uh, at the same time, uh, time has passed very quickly. So it's a so, kind of time travel. I, I think it it is a, it is a kind of science fiction. <laughs> Maybe yeah, it's a kind of uh, between science fiction and pure literature. So. Mm. There's, there, there's two other things that you brought up which are important. Memory, right? Yes. And, uh, well, maybe the other thing is whether or not this is science fiction because there's no science in it. There's definitely fiction, right? But there's nothing, there's no time travel machine, right? So that's why I would say, is it really science fiction? So, But that ties into memory. Is it that time is passing more quickly and he can't remember it? Or mm -hmm. is he in some kind of, or is he somehow not able to admit what's happening? Because look, in the very beginning of the story, here's my question. Uh, Nettie is described as being far from young. In fact, we should look at the very opening of the story because it's kind of interesting. Look, look, how, look at the description. The yes. very, very first paragraph very first paragraph of the story. It was I, one of, it was I one of those... the paragraph. Uh, he he uh, is uh, like young people. Such as, right. Look, look at this very first paragraph. It's almost like one or two sentences long and that's it. It was one of those midsummer Sundays when everyone sits around saying, I drank too much last night. You, you, you might have heard it whispered by the parishioners leaving church heard it from the lips of the priest himself, struggling with his cassock in the vestarium, heard it from the golf links and the tennis courts, heard it from the wildlife preserve where the leader of the Audubon group was suffering from a terrible hangover. I drank too much, said Donald Westerhazy. That's, the, that's his friend. We all drank too much, said Lucinda Merrill. It must have been the wine, said uh, Helen Westerhazy. I drank too much of that claret. All right, so there's this, there's, there's two things I want to point out here. So first is that, then we get to a description. It was at the edge of the Westerhazy's pool. Uh, the, okay, then it says the sun was hot. Nettie Merle sat by the green water, one hand in it, a one around a glass of gin. He was a slender man. He seemed to have that special slenderness of youth. And while he was far from young, there's the important phrase, mm -hmm. he had slid down the banister that morning and given the, the, the bronze backside of Aphrodite on the hall table a smack as he jogged toward the smell of coffee. So two important things. One, he's not young, but he's described in this sort of youthful way and the second thing is, in that very first sentence of the description, of the, of the story, look what's mentioned. I drank too much. Alcohol. Yes. Church. Uh, uh, yes. Right? What uh, is a claret, sorry? What is a claret? A, a red wine. You know, okay. you've, got, you've got Merlots, you've got Bordeaux, you've got claret. <laughs> I get, it, right. I get it. So firstly, we, we have to assure that, that he's, uh, although he's uh, already not young, mm -hmm. uh, but he's rich and he has, he's full of energy. He's, uh, he has a lover 
uh, until recently, uh, he, he broke up with her lover, but right. he has, uh, he has a long relationship. Uh, he had a relationship with his his lover uh, mm -hmm. for a long time. Although he has a wife, uh, he he has a, a big house in rich area. So and, and also everyone acts the same because yes. the first paragraph is about how everyone has a hangover, including yes. the church. <laughs> the people yeah. in the church have a hangover, right? Yes. So we. Uh, in, in Portocat, yeah, you, you, you give me, uh, there is a small discussion. Uh, in this uh, discussion, uh, Irish writer said that this is a story of Dranka's story. Right. Yeah, Dranka. Uh, from the first to the end of the sentence, uh, from first to the end, there is many discussion about uh, drinking uh, or, or wanting, wanting drink. <laughs> so, so um, it, it's a quite a complex to sh complex to plot in this story, uh, but it is uh, as if I drink uh, alcohol and read this text. <laughs> right, it's it's very confusing. It's it's, it's confusing. Kind of, yes. In, in one way, it's simple because he just goes from pool to pool. But in another way, time is out of sync with with the progression of the story, just like a. a a drunken night where you remember everything but not yeah. in the right order or something. Something is off. And but the protagonist of this story, Neddy, all the time drinking uh, something. All the yeah. time. Yeah, all the time. Or uh, he won't, or uh, if even there is no drink alcohol, he won't, he, he have strong desire to drink uh, alcohol. So. By, by the way, I, I put a link to the podcast in the chat window. It's there in the document, but you can yes, click on no, it there. But, yeah, but the thing is that I, I, went, I went to it, and then uh, I cannot find it, because if you click on the last on the last word, it says dive in, and when I clicked on it, it's another podcast. It's not, it's not this a one. podcast? A podcast, so there is no link from this page. So you have to find uh, using Google. What? Ah, no, okay, no, okay. Yes, no, yes, no, I, no, there's a link. I just put the link. No, in no, the, no, no. I, I couldn't find the link. Uh, link no. have exp ex experienced, experienced. So you have to find the link. The link, the link, the link did not expire. It works. I, I yeah, just but it's, it's not that one. It's, it's always all the same. You can find uh, Google, Googling about it. Hang on a second. The keywords. Hang on a second. Uh, click on it. Click on the link. And I, I am. It goes right there. It goes to Fiction Podcast The Swimmer, hosted by Ian Crow. Yes, yeah, can, but where, where is the podcast? Where can I can please to the link. Where can you listen to it? What is the link that goes straight to the podcast? Oh, straight to the podcast? I don't know. Uh -huh. That's I, it. I, I <laughs> That's what know. I meant. Well, and if you click at, at the end of the page, you'll see, like, listen and want to spoil it either. So take a break from the midwinter weather and dive in. And when you go and click on that, it goes straight to another podcast. Uh, okay, yes. I see what you mean. Ah, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. okay. But which one? Uh, Do you uh, find it, Yuki? Do you find the podcast with the swimmer? I think that he's going to get the link for us. Okay. Uh, but I can, I can also... When when I I'll look for it. If he doesn't get it, don't I'll get it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Um, uh, it's okay. I I'll get it later. You can find find easily, uh, Carmen. Uh, okay, don't worry Google. about it. Just, I'm so sorry to interrupt you. Just go on. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so my my question is, is time really passing? Like he, like the the Irish writer says uh, uh, that this is like a drunken story. And I wonder, is time passing, or is Ned just not, I mean, is he just in complete denial of all of these things? Is it just that he can't admit, even to himself, what's happened? Is that why, is his memory failed, or does he know perfectly what's happened, and he's just choosing to be this child, the way he's portrayed in the beginning? Sliding down the banister, slapping the backside of the Aphrodite statue, statue, uh, uh, doing a crazy thing like he, swimming all the way home. Throw away energy, yeah. <laughs> sleeping, <laughs> sleeping the stairs, and uh, yes, he throw away energy. Yes. 
Maybe. So is is time really passing fast or is it just that he's acting like a child and yes. and, and and then he runs into people who are not amused and then he, he but he's just still kind of half drunk and just so that's one of the questions I wonder if if the story raises. Uh, uh, not only I feel from I, I not only I I I have an impression from from his description in the first of story uh, mm -hmm. that he is young he is low energy but also I have an impression from him uh, some kind of arrogance arrogance right arrogance. Yes, uh, he's he's rich. He's a lot of money. He 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 thinks he has many friends. Uh, he's quite popular among neighbors, <laughs> and he she have a she he's popular. He's he th think he's popular among young women. Right. Uh, he's his lover still love. He he's sure that his lover still love him. Of course, or at or least no, no, he <coughs> welcome him. He bre he broke up with her, uh, so I think kind of arrogance. His former mistress asks him, "Quote: Will you ever grow up?" <laughs> at the end of the story, and it's only at the end of the story that Ned, uh, in this dark, empty house, realizes that time has passed, or I don't know, or just admits. You know, he, he seems to genuinely be unex, uh, not expecting it, but I wonder if that's because he's started to sober up by the end of the story. Yes, uh, um, by the end of the story, uh, so he's sober, sobering up, and he feels he he get as if he get older, get he he became older person, lonely, uh, how to say, uh, uh, without, without energy, uh, he, uh, even he couldn't swim in the end of the story, uh, in, in last pool, yeah, he mm -hmm. just walked along the pool, pool. Uh, so, so when he get to the, his home, he totally he exhausted. So, so it, it's a big change in his condition, of healthy condition. Um, and the end of the story, he, he <coughs> finds his house uh, empty. Uh, it, it means his, it means not only his house empty, but also he is inside of him. He finds nothing empty. Yeah. So it's a happy story. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's a whole story of it. It's a very happy story in the end. It's a happy story. Mm. Well, let's talk about it's emptiness happy. for a second because my second question was speaking about emptiness, how is suburbia in the story different or similar to what you normally think of? So, as Ned Neddy makes his journey across the county, we see a kind of emptiness. It becomes more and more apparent as time goes on, or, or as his experiences accumulate. So, what what is the picture of suburbia that we're that we're encountering here? Uh, I think suburbia uh, has uh, 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 suburbia, which is described in this story, uh, all the same. Uh, mm -hmm. Many of them only think about uh, their uh, their popularity among uh, among rich peoples, and and uh, and they are always anxious about losing something, losing richness, losing their relationship with neighbors, uh, their business. Uh, that's why why they they um, they are. Uh, Mm, uh, uh, they offer the party to neighbor to neighbors. They 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 write an invitation uh, to the party. Uh, Do they always accept invitations? Because remember, mm -hmm. remember the remember the people that he that are hostile to him at the end. Ah yes. Uh, 
Remember the Bizwangers? Bizwanga, he's, uh, <laughs> yes, uh, he, uh, they, are, they are quite uh, not a good person for me, not a good character. But uh, remember, remember the, the, the little description there. He, 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 he constantly turned down their invitations, right? Yes. Uh, but they kept sending them anyway. And then when he actually showed up for one time, they they act like they hate him. <laughs> They're completely <laughs> resentful. Now, now his wife uh, write an invitation of a Christmas party to everyone, uh, but this uh, this this person, this this people, this uh, Nadinga, uh, I can't remember. Uh, it, but it's the other way around. The Bizwangers, uh, Bizwanga. <laughs> they they regularly invite him and and Lucinda. It, uh, yes. But he always refuses. They never show up because they they are always uh, thinking about the, their business. So he, they they even they write an invitation to dentist to. But hang on a second. Hang on a second. Why do you think they're inviting the dentist instead of? It's, why do you think they're having parties with their accountants and dentists? Where are they in the social ladder, Yuki? Where are the bizwankers? Are they are they at the top of the ladder? Uh, no. Uh... No, of course not. So, why is it that Nettie keeps refusing Bizwanga, to? Bizwanga, Miss and Miss Mrs. Bizwanga is a snob. Uh, they they always. Always, they thinking about they are thinking about their business. Uh, I, I don't agree. I don't yeah, agree. No, no, no. I don't agree. I think that the I think that the snob is Nettie. I think that the business uh, they're not snobs, but but because they're just somehow lower in the social hierarchy, Nettie refuses to go to the parties because he's just a jerk. <laughs> and when he actually shows up, they're they're so furious at at being turned down all the time. And then he shows up drunk, uninvited. I think he wasn't even invited to this one, right? And so they're they're rude to his face. But I think that's I Nedi, could be wrong. Nedinga is a practical practical person, practical business person. Yeah. Who? The Bizwangers are Nettie. The Bizwanga. <laughs> Bizwanga. <laughs> the Bizwangers are practical, but I think it's because they have no choice. I think that they're inviting their their ve veterinarians and accountants because they have no friends, because they're just not... Okay, they don't have good social skills. That's true, mm. right? We know that they, they crack off-color jokes to the wrong people at the wrong time, but that's also because... It seems like they've been, they're outcasts. They're in the suburbs, but they don't fit in. They're not in the higher, high enough social order. They're not popular enough. And so these middle-aged rich adults act like school kids, and they ostracize the bizwangers. And the bizwangers have to invite someone to the party, so they invite, <laughs> they invite the veterinarian and their business clients. They've got no. Yeah, they invite everyone because they're desperate. Uh, most important point is is, is that uh, that Nelly uh, Nelly thinks himself as a, as a very popular person right. among their neighbors, but in in reality uh, he's uh, as you said he's a snob for for, for many people. <laughs> he's regarded as a snob, so not not everyone likes him. Uh, and, and, but, but this uh, communist, communist person, yeah, this uh, the, uh, nudist, nudist family. <laughs> yeah, the the Hallorans, the Hallorans. Hallorans has uh, friends, many friends, many many friends. Everyone like him, like them, uh, and they have uh, they they like uh, Nedi. It's true, and and they're the only. It's interesting, right? They're the only ones who are naked, yes. and yet, and the and the truth seems to come out for the first time when he meets the Hallorans. So he shows up. They all have to be naked because they're naturalists, and the first thing they do is apologize and they say that they're sorry for all of his misfortunes, and they hint that he sold his house, 
and they hint that something happened to his family. And Nettie just denies anything, puts his trunks back on, and leaves. But something doesn't really feel right anymore. And he, and at that moment, he smells burning wood. <laughs> what do you think that means? He smells burning wood, and he and he wants to have a drink. I'm just curious. I, let me see if I can find the passage. Could you repeat that again? Oh, uh, let, let me see if I can find the the passage. The Hallorans. Oh were, yeah. We are. Uh, is there a hangover or something? That's why it smells wood. I, well, I have no idea. Yes, smells what? Wood. 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 Ah, wood. ah, wood. So l let me see if I can find it. Ah, in here. the first of sin. Ah, sorry. Yeah. Uh, the Hallorans say, "We're terribly sorry." On page <laughs> nine, we're terribly sorry to hear about your misfortunes. <laughs> Nettie says, "My misfortunes? I don't know what you mean." Why we heard you sold the house and that your poor children I don't recall having sold my house and the girls are at home. Yes, Mrs. Halloran sighed. Yes. Her voice filled the air with an unseasonable melancholy. And Ned spoke briskly. Thank you for the swim. Well, have a nice trip. And then there's yes. this there's this little yeah, passage here. Yeah, firstly, it 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 uh, it, it has been Clear that uh, something have happened with with uh, Nari's children, yeah, Nari's family, uh, and uh, th this is the first person who who let let him know about it, but he didn't remember about it. Well, uh, it's hard to say if he doesn't remember or if he's just denying it. <clears throat> it, it seems like it's not clear. Um, but yes, also look at this line down here. Look at this line down here. Uh, the leaves, the leaves were. Well, I can't highlight it, but anyway, the leaves were fall. Oh, hold on a second. Maybe let me just select the highlighter. Um, th this last two lines of this paragraph. Leaves were falling around him, and he smelled wood smoke on the wind. Who would be burning wind at this time of year? Who would be who would be burning wood at this time of the year? So. I'm just curious if there's anything more significant about that line. Mm. Obviously, it's it's an indication that 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 the season has changed. Like uh, you burn wood in winter or in fall. But no, so, no, in summertime. Right. I, so I missed this sentence. What does it mean? Uh, it's difficult to yeah, yeah. So it obviously, on one hand, shows that time it's not the season that he thought it was. Uh, okay. But but also, I'm just curious what burning wood could possibly mean other than that, because it comes at this very particular moment. Hmm. You know, if you remember, uh, Nabokov, uh, who liked this story very much apparently, he said that a great story is a fairy tale, and that it's a fairy tale where one story bleeds through to another. So on the surface, you have the fairy tale. But under the fairy tale, you have another story that's being told, and you catch just glimpses and pieces of it. Here is a moment where the other story bleeds through. What do you think the second story is, based on this little exchange with the Hallorans? And what do you think, if any, significance is about smelling the wood? <laughs> because I, I I don't know. It just seems like no it's idea. so so particular. Do you think something? Do you think that? Uh, what do you think happened to his daughters? If that's true, what do you think happened? There is no discussion about about what concrete concretely happened with his children. True. Uh, but maybe something something bad fortune have happened. Did you ever see the yeah. the? She, maybe they they uh, 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 I I am I'm, I'm sure that he they they left uh, Nadi's home mm -hmm. and they have some problems. Um, uh, after it it turned out that Nadi has bankrupted, uh, he maybe he sold his house. So there are problems. Also, there are problems with his children. Eh? So, Could be. But, but not, what what kind of problem? There is no description here. Did you ever see the? Did you ever see the uh, Kubrick film, The Shining? 
I guess I have a story. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember how Jack Nicholson sometimes, uh, you know, he's in this dream that's not really a dream, and he sometimes remembers these people, and sometimes he doesn't, and it's sometimes the 1920s, and it's sometimes not, you know? He starts off as a guy that just goes on vacation with his family and earns a little money as a writer, mm -hmm. and he ends up being a guy who might be in a different time period, and he sometimes remembers these people. Sometimes he sees a bartender Bama. for the first time. Bama. Yeah, Bama. Yeah. The Bama from the past appears. Right. And then suddenly, and then suddenly, he remembers the guy like they've always known each other. Oh. It 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 reminds me of the story, because memories are not reliable in this story. Like there seems to be something that he remembers or doesn't remember. You know, it almost reminds me of so in The Shining, something happens that's completely crazy. Suddenly, all these people are in a room, and it's like a different time period, and then all of a sudden. It's reality, and he's living in that, and he remembers them like like they've been old friends, because yes. you know he he's in a he's in an empty room, and he says, you know, you send him up, Lloyd, and I'll knock him down, and then like, suddenly there's a bartender pouring him drinks, right? <clears throat> it kind of reminds me of the way we encounter Nettie's life, that memories that he doesn't have suddenly appear in front of him, and he later has to. You know, he, it's as if he's in such denial. I, I remember that, that Jack Nicholson in this film uh, mm -hmm. always writing in, in his typewriter the, the uh, expression, all, 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 all working at no play. Makes Jack a dull boy. Jack makes uh, Jack, Jack dull, yeah? Mm -hmm. Make all like, work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Ah, yes. <laughs> And uh, and it's a different there transfer. Are, uh, common, there are common between between the signing and this story. Just, <laughs> Maybe, just in the way that it, always uh, working, not just, working. Just in the way memory works. Just in the way because the house is full of memories, and they are always very unexpected. But once the people encounter the memories in the house, at least in, in Jack Nicholson's character. He suddenly, they're real, and here in this story, the memories come up, and the guy doesn't know what they are. But then later, he seems like he does know what they are, or he has to d deny them in some way. Because I'm just maybe it's a crazy comparison. I don't know. It's just because he says, "What misfortunes?" I don't know what you mean. And then, um, because uh, it seems like he's he's denying something. First he's surprised, but then he's denying it, like like as if he's in such a state of denial that it only becomes reality when someone else points it out. He's he's like content to live in his fantasy and then when someone points out reality, it's like the first time he ever heard it. Like a like a hazy drunk who's forgotten, you know, what's the details of of your life. Or like when you're waking from a dream and for a minute the dream is real and your life isn't real and you forget where you are. It has that quality. So it reminds me of of The Shining in that, the way waking and sleeping are kind of blurred. So just just for as, that reason. As the story goes, uh, reality for main person, for protagonist uh, in, this, in this story and in The Shining, film Shining, collapsing. Uh, Absolutely, yeah. Waking down. Yes, it, it's a common thing. Absolutely. And they both go through a transformation, too. Um, I'm not saying that there's much similarity. And, and in the end of the story, uh, he, he feels alone. Uh, he is separated from, from their family, his family. It's a commissioner. It's, a, of course, it's a, it's a common meaning. Well, uh, in, in The Shining, Jack Nicholson's character becomes uh, like an animal, right? <laughs> he literally sounds like an animal going through the maze. Yes. This this yeah. guy doesn't become an animal, mm -hmm. but but he definitely goes through a transformation. He he it's it's as if all of those years have just caught up to him. 
and and instead of sliding down the banister and, and, and looking youthful, he can barely walk. So maybe it's more like 2001 instead of uh, <laughs> it's The Shining. He seems to age very rapidly or something. And um, one other thing is that the more people he meets and the more swimming pools he's encountered, they mm -hmm. seem to become more and more and more distant from him. So yes, by the yes, yes, yes. It's very interesting. Yes. Uh, yes. Firstly, he he thought that his neighbor is all friends. Uh, right. He he's one of them. He have a he have a sense of uh, un, unity with with his neighbors. But in uh, as as story goes, he realized that he's uh, he, he, um, he's separated from their neighbors uh, psychologically. Uh, and um, it, so, uh, um, uh, and he he found that neighbor is not so happy happy people. Uh, neighbor has a problem, uh, their problems, and their neighbor also feels lonely. So and he he can't he can't uh, um, he, he can't be friends with the neighbors <clears throat> such as, such as um, isolation yes he feel isolation f f from their neighbors do you think that it's something that changes or do you think that it's something he just realizes in I other words he uh, just what, realized were, were they ever friends? Were any of these people ever truly friends? Ever? Because I doubt it. For example, let me ask you a question. Do you remember Shirley Adams at the end of the story? Remember the lover, Shirley Adams? The, the mistress. Ah, he's a, he's a lover. Right. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Um, how does he describe, do you remember how he describes his feelings uh, for he, Shirley Adams. Firstly, he he thought that that he he already tired. He wanted to drink a beer, a beer or wine. Oh, and gin, if he actually, if he <laughs> drop uh, if he drop to to the house of Adam Adam's house, she she of course she um, treat him a cup of uh, a glass of wine or wine. Mm -hmm. Yes, but uh, 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 all. Uh, Although he already break up, break up with with her, he he, he quite cruelly, he quite cruelly, uh, um, say, said to him some some cruelly words. Some um, she was cruel to him, or he was cruel to her. He was he was cruel cruel, cruel he was cruel to, he was he uh, he he broke. He, he, he broke he, off. He broke relation. off her. Yeah. yeah he broke. He, he broke it off with her. He threw her. Yeah. Uh, 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 she, she, she grabbed his. He. Uh, she, she. She wanted to. Uh, she wanted to uh, continue relationship, but he denied it. The relationship. Uh, and and let's look at but, one. But but he have he he have confidence that she would she would uh, invite he, he, him warmly. Let's take a look at one passage of description that I think is really important when their relationship. He says at the end, the next pull on his list, uh, the last but two, belong to his old mistress Shirley Adams. If he had suffered any injuries at the Bizwangers, they would be cured here. Love, sexual roughhouse in fact, was the supreme elixir, the painkiller, the brightly colored pill that would put the spring back into his step, the joy of life in his heart. So how does he define love? <laughs> even even in love, he still he still it's just there to get something out of someone else. Love is defined in these little interjections, sexual roughhouse, in fact. So that's how he defines love. So it doesn't doesn't matter for him. Uh, there is love or not. He he have confidence of his lover. Uh, 
have, and have, a, have a, some kind of painkiller. And, 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 and also, look at her pain. At the end here, it says, yes. it says something like this. You know, he broke it off. She seemed to confuse. She seemed confused to him, and he wondered if she was still wounded. Would she, God forbid, weep, weep again? So he's such a nice guy. All he cares about is that he doesn't want to deal with her crying. That's all. That's all he can think about is, oh God, she's not going to cry again, right? After he broke off his relationship with her, and probably made lots of promises, and then stayed with his wife and just left her all alone. So that's 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 how nice he is. <laughs> and then they have this exchange. So I wonder if that isn't the picture of suburbia that we're getting. That everywhere he goes. Everyone appear. Everyone's cordial with each other. Even Shirley, even Shirley, uh, whatever her name, Shirley Adams. Even she is cordial with him. She's not nice, but she's cordial. She doesn't say, "Get out of my house! I'm calling the police." Everyone knows the social rules, except the Bizwangers. Everyone knows what they are, and yet there's no closeness, and that becomes more and more apparent. It seems like the landscape. That we're getting of suburbia is this place where everyone knows the rules, but no one really likes anyone. No one's really close. There's no genuine relationship, and even love is defined as something selfish. Um, they, they think uh, themselves as a as a decent uh, member of society. They they think they are they have friends, uh, but in reality they are lonely. It seems that way, and there's one more. Question I was going to ask here at the end, which was, uh, oh, let me go back to my PDF, which was, uh, oh yeah, Ned number four. Ned decides he is an explorer. What role does exploration and do maps play in the events of the story? This is something which seems really significant because Ned is an educated person. And they're all, you know, in the suburbs. They're all probably lawyers and doctors and teachers, particularly university teachers, um, because that's kind of where the the faculty live. You know, they work in the city, and they might have a house in Westchester or something. So, it seems hardly coincidental that the idea of exploration is in the story. In a very active way, because Ned says in the beginning of the story, right, the actual line is. Um, uh, let me see if I can find it's it. It's difficult for me to uh, to answer this pro is this question. What what role does exp exploration? Um, I don't know. It, it, uh, firstly, he just he, it 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 just it happens to him that that, that idea. Right, I just think there is no him. such uh, deep meaning. Oh, I disagree. I, I think Not it yeah? can I think it can't be a coincidence. I, I, mm. I mean for, for for two reasons. One, every story is a journey. A character is on a journey in pretty much every story. Uh, so it it seems that the journey here is the idea of journey is being questioned in some way. And 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 second, that it's a parody, that he 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 jokingly calls this journey, he the Ned is parodying the idea of journey. Yes, it's it's just a joke for me, right? For the, for the first time. But if every narrative, at least in Western fiction, is is a journey of a character to overcome obstacles and to go to a higher state than before. It seems that it's it's part of the the theme of the story, in some particular way. Um, so let me just think. Uh, yeah, okay. Ned likens himself to a quote legendary figure, who is making an important discovery as he begins his journey. He calls himself a pilgrim, and an explorer. Ah, uh, pilgrim. Yes, yes. There is such a. Yes. I mean, a, when you when thought, you think of an exp go ahead. He thought this uh, ex ex exploration uh, as a pil pil pilgrimage. So pilgrimage. Pilgrimage. So right. he 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 
he want to find something, yeah? Something but, important for him. But here's my question about that. Does he have a map in the story? Uh, uh, a map is in his head. In his head, right. Yes, he, in the first of the story, uh, he, he described his, uh, his map in, the, in, the, on, in his head. Uh, um, he called this map as uh, his wife's name. Uh, yeah, he, call, he calls the, uh, the, the, new, the new river he discovers, he names it after his wife, right? Something like that? Yes, yes, he calls yes. it the Lucinda, yeah. Lucinda, Lucinda. It is, are the details and memories in his head reliable, Yuki? Uh, I think not reliable. So is the map reliable? Uh, no. No. Map, map in the head, head is <laughs> not reliable. Wrong. So what is that? If you're going to compare him to, say, uh, a hero in, in an epic like, like the Odyssey, how would you compare Neddy to uh, Odysseus or Telemachus or some classical hero? Uh, uh, maybe you don't know. I... Uh, uh, reading this story, I remember. Uh, uh, I, um, uh, I I remind uh, I remind of uh, I, Abe I no was, Kobo, I was Kobo Abe noble of Kobo Abe. Maybe don't you you don't know? Uh, I don't think so. Ho uh, Abe no Kobo is a Japanese writer, uh, and he has. He has often compared to Frank Kafka. Uh, maybe Kafka's story uh, may be similar to this story. Uh, very, yeah, I think it's very similar. In this story, in, in, in the story of Abeno Kobo and Kafka, Franz Kafka, uh, often mm, night, nightmare exploration of uh, individuals mm -hmm. uh, in society, in Mm, in modern society, in contemporary society, uh, uh, are described. Mm -hmm. So, in this sense, uh, this story, uh, um, um, uh, John Siba, uh, similar to uh, Kafka and Abe Kobo. Well, the reason why I mentioned the Odyssey is because it seems very clear that Nettie is also on a kind of an odyssey. And just like in the Odyssey, where a character is trying to make its way home, Nettie is trying to make his way home, but when he gets there, his home is empty. And his map has failed him. And his confidence has left him. And his memories uh, all seem to be false memories or, or something, right? So it, I can't help but think that there's two levels this is just my opinion, I could be wrong, but it seems like there's two levels. One is the level of the story. Then there's another meaning, which is the idea of this modern figure in the modern world and this certainty of a, of a, of a progression of, you know, you've got the map in your head and you're going to follow it and north is true. Here, the, more, the, the longer on his journey, the more he realizes that he has no compass and that everything sort of becomes meaningless. So it seems that he's making a comment about journeys in general, about what a journey is, what an odyssey is in the modern sense, and that it's, it's happening in suburbia. There's no more fighting dragons on the edge of the world. There's only walking home from your neighbor's house uh, outside the city. That's, that's you know... <laughs> That's the exotic territory. And so he has to invent this whole scenario to have this mythical adventure. Uh, so I can't help but think that he's trying to address the idea of the hero. Is Nettie a hero, Yuki, do you think? Yes, uh, he, <laughs> I don't know if he's a the hero or not. He's a protagonist of this story. He's an explore, explorer, a pilgrim myth. Uh, in this story, I, and I think many people has uh, has um, close to him, right? Because uh, many people in this uh, in this modern this contemporary society feel lonely and seeking something, seeking something precious for for their life. It in this sense, uh, many people are similar to this. Uh, 
proto protagonist of the story. Right, we can all relate to him. And I think one thing that's really interesting is that the adventure happens in his head. There's nothing adventurous about swimming in a swimming pool. But he's transformed it into this myth. Kind of like us needing to read great narratives and great stories to, to, to have the sense of greatness that we don't have anymore or the sense of journey that most people don't experience. And yet, as he creates this story, it begins to unravel as he lives it. He tries to live it and it's not possible. Even, even his original idea of having fun, everything just disappears. So it has something to do with, with I think, the kind of hero that this modern protagonist really is. It's a hero that's living in a fabrication, maybe, and it happens in the most mundane circumstances possible, right? Uh, and heroicism isn't heroicism. It's very selfish and... Heroicism, heroicism, for, for you, a man. Her to be a hero is a hero heroic. A heroic, okay. So the noun is heroicism. Heroicism. Heroicism, okay. Um, so I think somehow that, that, that there's a statement being made about the modern hero. Mm. Nettie is about the, the most opposite a hero you can imagine. There's nothing heroic about him. He's selfish. He's superficial. He does everything for the wrong reason. Something terrible happened to his daughters, and he can't remember. He can't admit it, and he can't remember it even, right? Mm -hmm. So he's about the opposite, the most opposite you could possibly think of with a hero. Do we feel sympathy for him? I I, I feel sympathy for him, but I don't feel. He, I don't think he is a hero. <laughs> hero is some kind of um, a hero should have some superior. Above above us, hero. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> Sorry, no, there was someone at the door. Yes, go ahead. Hero, hero is a uh, hero. Ha, hero should ha, hero should have some some special ability, and hero is uh, hero hero have to be uh, respected from uh, by many people. I think. I, I don't feel hero right. from from this uh, um, story. It's uh, protagonist, uh, but but, 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 I, I, but we I, all I, feel sympathy for him. We, yes, we I, I feel sympathy. I I feel close to him. I think that I think that John Cheever is trying to say that that's what a hero is. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow, I think he's trying to say that that's, that's the state of heroism in the 20th century. Remember, this is not a new story. This is a bit old. This is from the, well, I don't know, late 60s maybe, maybe or something. Maybe he's a hero of contemporary society. That's what I, that's what I think he's getting at. Do you, the only thing that bothers, I think the story is quite brilliant, but the only thing that bothers me is that we see everything from Nettie's point of view and we never see anything from anyone else's point of view. Of course, that's the logic of the story. It has to be that way. But it just seems like it's so closed, so close-minded. Mm -hmm. I wonder if th there at no point does Nettie think, you know, I could have acted differently, and I could still act differently. That's not even an option. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I wonder if that's part of the point, that it, heroicism in exploration and open-mindedness are just simply not possible, at least in suburbia of a rich city in America, at least there. So I think that's the profound statement that I leave with in this particular story. Mm. <laughs> but um, I'm not so rich, rich person, <laughs> so in this sense I don't feel sympathy to, to this story. Mm, hero, <laughs> I, mm, so um, uh, because uh, as uh, as I mentioned, he he has some kind of arrogance. Uh, that's why I don't like him very much. Yeah, he's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> but 
if we go back to our let's go, let's go back to the movies for a second. Every big successful movie since I don't know when, you know, uh, it, it, certainly not in the golden days of Hollywood, but you know, from kind of the 1970s onward, maybe even earlier, you know, there are always these horrible figures, but they're always the protagonists, you know, like look at these big successful movies from the last 30 years. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, okay, look at The Shining. Jack Nicholson is, is a very interesting character, yes. but he's not, he's not someone that you like. You wouldn't want to hang out with him. Uh, I don't know. Look at Raging Bull. Jake LaMotta is not, uh, is not a nice guy. <laughs> in Raging Bull, but he's an but he's an interesting character, and in fact, in Raging Bull, there's a biblical quote at the end of the movie uh, that talks about not judging people. I don't remember what it is, but I remember the quote, and it's almost as if we are witnesses to the desperation of you know humankind, mm -hmm. and 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 it seems like that's the new purpose of of stories and fiction and odysseys is to not to, I mean, I'm just speculating, but not to be impressed. It's to be this kind of witness where you see how depraved we can be and think about it and reflect on it. Because we, we are definitely, I don't know about you, but I definitely reflect on Nettie. I relate to him in a way. In another way, I really don't like him. He represents kind of everything I don't like about people. <laughs> of course, we, we, we found some, 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 something common with Nadi. That's why this story uh, is interesting for many people. Um, um, it resonates, yes, doesn't it? And it, um, it, uh, this story gives us uh, some... Uh, some um, some hint to to live better. Um, I think it was to read this, this story. Uh, and by the way, if you've ever been to the suburbs, uh, of and Nita, I, I think Jack Nicholson and Nelly is uh, some some kind of character actor, not not a hero. Uh, you uh, do you remember before uh, uh, in Hollywood, uh, 1960s films? Uh, there are uh, uh, very strong hero like Ben Ha. Do you know Ben Ha? Yeah. Of, of course, it was of course. Charlton Heston, right? Charlton Heston and and uh, other films, uh, many many films, such a such a films of, uh, with big even even Stephen Kubrick made hero films. Remember Spartacus. Uh, Sparkas, yes. <laughs> Sparkas, yes. Ah, uh, Steve, uh, yes, it's also directed by, by yes, uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, same, same director. Uh, so. And then it all changed. And then, and then Vietnam happened, and uh, and bankruptcy happened, and uh, all the you know Hollywood went bankrupt in the sixties. Yes, yes. They had no money. Suddenly, the portrayal before, before different. The, before that, the uh, hero have to be strong, very very clear character. But after that, 1970s, 1980s, uh, hero, uh, of, uh, protagonist of the story, uh, became a character, characteristic. Very, uh, sometimes it became maniac, uh, like... Right. Uh, like Shining's hero, yeah. So, so I think the 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 meaning of uh, main actor has been changed uh, very um, very rapidly, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and and I think the Nady uh, is a hero of a new age, 1970s <laughs> maybe, yeah. Just like, just like. Uh, Kafka's hero was a giant dung beetle. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> that we all related to. Yes, Nettie, yes. Nettie is a dung beetle in his own way yes. through his attitude. It's a kind of anti-hero. No, it's not anti-hero. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, anti-hero. Like, but, but but we cannot uh, but feel uh, sympathy to to the hero of the story. Uh, okay. And I have a question. Uh, in this story, uh, uh, all happened uh, 
uh, surrounding uh, the lady, uh, about his family, about his child, uh, about his bankrupt, about his uh, relationship with his wife. Uh, it, it all happened in the future. Uh, yeah, it seems like it, doesn't it? Yes. It does seem like it's all in the future. It's yes. correct, yeah. Do you think so? Yeah, I so, think so. So he he saw the in in half in half a day in afternoon he saw his future. Yeah, what will what will be happened surrounding surrounding him uh, around him in the future? I, I he, mean, he saw the future. I I I I I, I would say that. Well, is, is it the future? I, I think in a way I think in a way you're right, but I think it's uh, yeah I think so uh, because what's well, two ways to read it? It's that you know you know they say before you die your life flashes in front of your eyes right that's the cliche expression, and this looks like the 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 last breath of a dying man who sees his life flash before his eyes. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, it's also uh, someone who's seeing the present, coming to terms with the present. So it's sort of like uh, you know, each 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 pool. I mean, you know, it, it seems like it's it's all three time periods at once. It seems like it's the past, present, and future, because each pool represents a different stage of his life. Yes. So he's he he's youthful in the first pool, whether fooling around and uh, getting drunk, and then he seems to age. So it seems to be symbolic of a different stage of his life. Yet it seems to be indicative of the future, because at the beginning of the story, he seemed to have a family, and suddenly he doesn't. That seems to happen in the future, uh, and at the same time, it seems to be a realization of the present, because he's uh, he's got to admit to what he's done because he's being accused of of these of denial so he's got to wake up and, and admit to it uh, <coughs> so, he 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 don't um, he 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 don't see the future he just experience the future because he, in the end of the story uh, he 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 was tired very much and he 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 felt he was getting older, much 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 older than before, in in the, in such a short time, and he even he couldn't uh, swim in the last pool, and he 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 always he 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 needed to rest, and it means he also get older, so he. Mm, how to say? He he's not just um, observer. He experiences such a time time passing very quickly. Yeah, just like <clears throat> just like Gregor Samson feels like a bug and he becomes a bug, and yet he can still think and talk and reason. <laughs> so it seems to be it seems to be multiple things happening at once. And they all speak to each other in some way. So, yes, I think it's the past, present, and future. And I think he's both living it and dreaming it. It's like it's like a living dream, like a conscious, a lucid dream, or something like that. And uh, if you try to analyze any one aspect of the dream too much, the dream falls apart. So it's the totality of these themes that that seems to make it make sense. It's yes, but it's definitely like a dream logic. Well, what what confused me in this story is that there is three times. Uh, first, uh, his uh, his um, protagonist to the uh, time, right. And second is uh, his family and his child to time. Uh, third is uh, 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 season is changing. So in the first of story there is a summer, mid summer. In the end of story, in it is already autumn. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. So there is three threat of time. Uh, it confused me. And I think it's I think it confuses him too, 
<laughs> <laughs> That's what I was saying. You said it was difficult to read, but I don't think it is. I think that you are experiencing exactly what Nettie is experiencing. Oh. So in a way, it's, it's because the language is not so difficult. I think the confusing thing is that reality is not what we expect, you know? So we have to, so we question, did we read it right or is that what's happening? And yes, that's what's happening. Mm -hmm. Time doesn't flow right. Memories and dreams seem to be, um, you know, it's not well, a fan. You are really. uh, they're obscured, they're, there's a line blurred, and yet it's not like a fantastic realism. Fragile. Uh, memory is very fragile. Yes. And it's not like a Gabriel Garcia Marquez story where fantastic things happen. Here, it's a nightmarish kind of fantasy. It's, it's uncomfortable. It gets more and more uncomfortable as you read. But it's fascinating. So it's fascinating, <laughs> yes. It's, I have no doubt about it. Well, I think we're going to have to stop. We're, we're a bit over time. <laughs> but, uh, but hopefully, uh, I think this is a good story for many reasons. One, because uh, it paints a very interesting picture and a very true picture of American society. Even, and it's not out of date at all. Quite, quite, quite uh, apt for today. Uh, but also, because it lets you know something about the possibilities of fiction that in a simple way you can say very profound and complex things. The language of the story is not hard to understand. The action of the story is not hard to follow. And yet, there's a whole other realm of meaning. There's a whole other universe that, that's being alluded to. And it's done in such a simple way. So it just shows you what's possible. So I think that's a very interesting thing to think about as well. In addition to what the story means. There are many words I don't know <laughs> uh, in this story and, and the plot is quite complicated so it is, it is quite a hard challenge. It, it was quite a hard challenge to read this book, this story, but it, I, it, uh, I, was, I was moved by this story. It's very interesting uh, and I and thank, you for, thank you for the opportunity uh, to, for me to think about uh, the story and it's very exciting. Uh, don't, don't, <clears throat> don't end up like Nettie. That's the important thing, okay? Thank you very much. <laughs> Listen, Yuki, <clears throat> send, me, send me the words that you had trouble with, or if you, if you like, yeah, send them to me in a message or an email, and I can help you understand them too, okay? If there's a list of words in particular that were difficult, let me know. Send them to me. Okay, thank you. Because right? yes. I'd, li I'd like to know... I'd like to know, because for me, I thought that the vocabulary here was, was not difficult, uh, and I wanted to pick an easier story to read. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's more difficult than I think, because I'm American, and so a lot of this vocabulary is, is not obvious. It seems easy to me, but maybe I'm wrong. Like, okay, some words are weird, like gazebo. Fine. Not everyone knows what a gazebo is. But... Um, but send me the words that you found particularly difficult. I'd be interested to see what you found challenging in the story. Okay? It also uh, it was also difficult for me to imagine the scene because I I don't know much about the suburb life in in rich area in America. So oh, I, you yeah. just have to just have to watch uh, go watch the graduate. yes, watch the old film. <laughs> just, just just watch the graduate. Uh, with uh, 1968, with uh, first film by uh, what's his name by uh, uh, Dustin Lee. Hoffman. Dustin Hoffman. Dustin Hoffman. Ah, yes. <coughs> Graduate. Graduate. 1968, directed uh, by. In the end of the story, uh, wedding wedding party. Exactly. Uh, Hoffman uh, rushed in, in, into the and grab the grab 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 his rubber. And get out such a story, yeah. But no. watch that film because if you want to see the sub the suburbs and what they look like, yeah, that's I that's your film to watch. And there even it's even got swimming pools in it. <laughs> the passage of time in the graduate is done with swimming pools. There's a very classic scene where he's swimming where he's diving into a swimming pool. So watch it again and you'll get a very clear picture.
Also, I know, I, I know that there is a film uh, based on this story. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, the yeah. The swimmer. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I never saw it. I, 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 I didn't see, but it, but uh, many people, many recommended. One of my favorite directors too. Yeah. The, the director of the swimmer is uh, is uh, Frank Perry. Frank Perry. And he's interesting because he's one of the first independent filmmakers, mm. uh, but no one knows who he is. He's not famous. Um, so it's he's, a he's kind he's, of it's a genre with new cinema, yeah, new American shim, cinema. Yeah, he's yeah. like he's like with Cassavetes, and he's in that period. Uh, same same kind of like you know kind of reacting to the the French new wave, uh, new wave. Mm -hmm. but he's a. Uh, He's not so well known, but he's interesting. So I, I like him because he's different and he's an independent filmmaker, and uh, he did interesting films. They're very conventional, but they're interesting. They were they were offbeat. So, uh, but I never saw The Swimmer, so maybe I should go look for it. Well, but I also I know that the main uh, main 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 actor ah uh, this uh, The Swimmer sta starring by. By the same actor as uh, Spartax. <laughs> was it? W no, not Spartacus. It was. No? Uh, it was. Uh, I think it was Burt Lancaster. It was. John um, Lancaster. Yeah. I think it was Lancaster. Ah, right. right. Not Kurt Douglas. Uh, I thought the Michael Douglas. Uh, no. No, no. It's. it's <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's Kurt, Kurt Lancaster. So the guy ah, from. Lancaster. Yes, yes, yes. Bad from Lancaster. here to eternity, that yes. guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On that note, we're going to call it a day. I'll be back tomorrow for the business class and Friday for three hours in a row. We've got a hot topic coming up. If you have a suggestion for the hot topic, send me a message. On Saturday, learning through pictures and also a new short story. I have not chosen this. Oh, I do know what story it's going to be. It's going to be a short story by Shirley Jackson, uh, The Lottery. So that will be coming up on I'm Saturday. sorry, Ahumat. I'm, I'm I'm all, all, I'm do all in, always talking. No, I am fine now because uh, <laughs> uh, uh, because I had no clue about the story, so I was supposed to sit and listen just uh, <laughs> that what is going on. So uh, I think uh, uh, it was uh, I don't know. Uh, I was supposed probably to join earlier. <laughs> uh, at least at least I can yeah I can now uh, watch the recorded class and I will uh, read the story. And you can also listen to the recording. Click on the link to the podcast, yes. which I posted. Yuki found the link, so I posted it in the document. Okay. So it's always a good idea to read and listen so that you can get uh, a native speaker. You can have the pronunciation there for you as you read. And it's not long. The, short, the story is short. So I'm sorry. You, I'm sorry you couldn't uh, join the class reading classes. No, that's uh, why because I joined. Uh, <laughs> I, I recommend you read this story. Very, very. It's very interesting. Okay, it's I, will, a, I will. It's a good one. It's a good uh, one. Yes. Oh, oh, always. Uh, <laughs> and there'll be another good one this Saturday. Are you around on Saturday, Ahmad? He, on Saturday, uh, I don't know. I might. Oh. Uh, I will try my best. Okay, I will try. All right, best. you try your I, best. I can promise. But. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I so, feel lonely sometimes uh, in reading <laughs> class. So no, it, 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 would be, it would be nice if you could uh, join the uh, 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 reading was, class. Was, was, was here. Yes, so Carmen he, is also here. You, <laughs> okay. But you are also with us. No, <laughs> I'm going to try to. I'm going to try to change my schedule. I've been trying to get them to change it because there's a mistake uh, in my schedule because it's at the wrong time. So if I can change it. We can do the reading classes during the week, maybe at a more convenient time. We can try. But anyway, I'll let you know about that. Okay, I have to run, so I'll see you tomorrow Thank at you uh, 12 GMT. And don't forget about the next reading class on Saturday afternoon if you can make it. Bye for now, everyone. Okay. Bye for now. Okay, yeah. See you next Goodbye. time. See you next time. Bye. Bye.